coming up on Mountain News This Morning. Crowds gathered in the city of Pikeville during the weekend as this year's Hillbilly Days Festival came to a close. And people who enjoy their regular dose of fried chicken flocked to Corbin to celebrate one of the most well-known chicken chains that began right here in Kentucky. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning, I'm Chas Gayhart. It is 6.32 on Monday, April 24th. Let's go back over and check in with Brandon. Well, How are you? I'm okay. How are you? Good. Good. Well, the forecast, not so good with temperatures, yes. but pretty good with like looks. It looks very nice out there this morning. Those looks, that, oh, when the sun shines and you think you're going to walk out and it's going to be warm. It's, it's going to be one of those sunshine. days. Exactly. So <laughs> just be ready to wear a jacket, at least some sort of jacket, all day long. Let's take a look, see what's going on. Beautiful start to the morning out there at the I 75 corridor at Corbin. Sun coming up quickly. Some light traffic, 33 down that way this morning. 30, excuse me, 29 in Irvine, 28 in Williamsburg, and 39 in Logan. That's our warm and cold spots across the region. Some upper 30s in Jackson, Prestonsburg, Pikeville, and Monticello. Everybody else is kind of in that uh, freezing range there this morning or just above or just below. Breakfast forecast, well, we're going to see temperatures in those 30s for the most part this morning, close to freezing, and then we'll see a slow climb later today into the upper 50s a little bit later on this afternoon. Chess. Thanks, Brandon. Well, it was a fun-filled weekend across our region and beyond during the weekend, the festivals, and other events to enjoy. In Pikeville, the third and final day of the 46th Hillbilly Days Festival wrapped up on Saturday. Organizers say more than 100,000 people came out during the weekend. The festival was capped off with a parade as the grand finale, but the event is all for a good cause. Jimmy Kenny is the son of one of the festival's founders. He says to see the small parade his dad started grow into what it has become is amazing. You think that it started out just as a little parade, it grew into this, and now we donated almost $3 million to the Lexington Springs Hospital. But people don't realize the kids, how many kids will we take care of? Kenny added that Shriners Children's Hospital in Lexington serves around 1,100 children from Eastern Kentucky alone and around 14,000 across the state. Restaurant chain Kentucky Fried Chicken has deep roots in Southeast Kentucky, leading to one town having a celebration with a festival. WYMT's Chandler Wilcox details how fried chicken became a catalyst of creativity in Corbin. They call it Colonel Fest. for the clock and strut contest, egg toss. Even a uh, finger licking chicken, 0.5 K raise. So participants run 800 feet, eat a piece of Kentucky Fried Chicken, and run 800 feet to the finish line. This is the third year with an event born through the creative minds of Corbin Tourism. So many of our businesses, you know, our restaurants and our shops and everybody's open today, you know, and, and it's about community and coming together. So it's just being creative. Colonel Fest has already grown in popularity. You know, I think the first year we were just a couple blocks and, you know, looking today, I think it's four or five blocks. and. You know, it's, it's, it's a great way to celebrate Colonel Sanders and everything that being the, the hometown of the first ever KFC, what it means to us here in Corbin. The festival is part of what makes the Southeast Kentucky town unique. There's so many different uh, uh, qualities and, and, and talents and everybody's coming together and just having a good time and we're sharing, we're making new friends. Making new friends <laughs> one pluck at a time. Hey Cameron, good job. And Corbett, Channel Wilcox, WYMT Mountain News. Many at Colonel Fest describe the festival as another example of how close and creative the community is. Well, London City Tourism hosted another Red Bud ride attracting cyclists from across the country. For the second time, kids got to participate too. City Tourism partnered with Allegra Print Sign and Design to put together a junior Red Bud ride for kids between ages 6 and 10. Allegra volunteer Claiborne uh, Vanier says the junior riders learned safety tips and rode for hours. They get to do the loops, which was their, I think, favorite part this year. 
Uh, for every loop, they got a ticket to win a chance for a $100 Walmart gift card. Uh, their favorite part of the loop, I think, was there were several rounds they got a ride with one of the adult Redbud riders, and that really got them excited and pumped up. Nine-year-old Ariel Grossweiler won the junior Redbud ride with 187 loops, adding up to 15 and a half miles. She told WYMT she has legs of steel. Race enthusiasts from beyond the mountains and within came out to take part in the Pine Mountain Hill Climb event in Bell County this weekend. Sunday marked the last day of the three-day event, which is part of the Appalachian Hill Climb series. Event organizers say the Hill Climb impacts local tourism in a big way, which several of the racers say they're happy to be a part of. It's relatively close to a lot of metropolitan areas in the area, so you're going to have people coming in from all directions. And the reality from economic development standpoint, we all come in, stay in hotels, have dinner at the local restaurants. Uh, the two of us are spending a whole week here that it's almost like a vacation that otherwise we wouldn't be doing if it wasn't for, for this. This weekend's hill climb event brought in people from all across the country and even brought in racers from Canada and Europe. And another Thunder Over, Thunder Over Louisville is in the books. The 34th year of celebration was held this past weekend. The pilots who got to fly during this event made those formations and maneuvers almost look easy, but it takes a lot of training and experience. David Okacha talked with one pilot about how it felt to fly above the city and crowd. So this is the cutting edge of military aviation. This is what gives the United States a uh, lead over any other country on the planet today is the F-35. Underneath that helmet and the pilot of this cutting edge technology is Kristen Bale Wolf. So nine times the force of gravity means everything weighs nine times as much. So that five pound helmet on my head now weighs 45 pounds. It's not just the helmet. When the F-35 hits 9 Gs, Wolf says you can't even move your arm. Well, it's taxing on the body. Uh, you get used to it 12 years down the road as a fighter pilot. Piloting is a family affair for Wolf. Her dad was a fighter pilot and was still in the Air Force when she joined. Now, years later, she was flying high above Louisville for Thunder. Yeah, anytime you can fly over water, we can use flares. So that was pretty cool today. Uh, but anytime you can see, you know, a mile or two long of people along the Riverwalk enjoying the show, it's on the TV uh, broadcast, um, skyscrapers behind you, that is all, like, very, very challenging. She says the wind made things a little difficult, but it was still fun to fly up and down the Ohio River. And that was David Ochoa reporting. For more than eight hours, the roaring of planes filled the skies over Louisville. The event capped off with one of the biggest fireworks shows in the country. And veterans from Kentucky ranging from the Korean War to the Vietnam War took to the sky during the honor flight during the weekend. It was a marathon day of activities in the nation's capital, including sightseeing, tributes, and stops at Arlington National Cemetery and the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. Vets landed at the Bluegrass Airport Saturday evening to a crowd of patriotic Americans ready to thank them for their service. I think he is really just probably just so elated right now. He's probably super excited. Cry, he was crying this morning, so he is really, really excited to do this. We see all the monuments out there. More than 60 veterans took the honor flight during the weekend. A first-of-its-kind community center and museum held its grand opening in Ashland on Saturday. The C.B. Knuckles Community Center and Black History Museum is aiming at preserving black history in Ashland. The facility plans to hold educational programs, archives, art, and genealogy research in the future. The ribbon cutting, including remarks from leaders across the region and several musical performances. Amazing. It's a dream of mine. I, I, uh, I never thought it would happen. And uh, the community's been very supportive of me and my aunt. Um, I, I don't know what to say, to be honest with you. I'm overwhelmed. Overwhelmed. The food, drinks, and entertainment were free, but donations from the community were welcome to help the center and museum. Six forty-one here on this Monday morning. Some light traffic on the Mountain Parkway near the Wolf Powell County line, close to Slade, right at freezing up there this morning. So again, bundle up as you're heading up the door. Temperatures in the twenties right now in Irvine and Williamsburg, and some other folks there pretty close. Jones will get in close. Wise actually in the twenties just now. Notice them 
and then you see Somerset's down to 30. So it wouldn't surprise me if they fall into the 20s here before too long. Manchester at 31 would be the next one. And then we've got uh, Logan at 39 on the other side of the scale. Temperature change. Still nobody in the double digits yet, but Harlan and Middlesbrough, 9 degrees colder than they were this time 24 hours ago right now. 7 degrees colder in Prestonsburg, Somerset, Wise, and Jonesville. Out the door forecast, well, we're going to see sunshine today, and it's going to warm us up some but not a lot, only about 57 for a daytime high. Jess. Thanks, Brandon. And thank you for joining us. The time is now 642. Still to come on Mountain News this morning. The governor of Ohio expects to see more help for the people of East Palestine as their lives could continue to be impacted from a toxic train derailment.